Hey, what's up, Pep Nation? Week number four, it's speed day two, and we it's a D-low week when it comes to our speed. We got off the track, we're back in the gym. A lot of great things going on. Hey, we got speed mechanics, we got the hurdle drills, we went med ball work, we got some kettlebell work. We got down and dirty with some chaos core work today. Can't wait for you guys to get into it. Let's go. Hey, what's up, Pep Nation? This is an amazing week to take a step back and rejuvenate, but that doesn't mean we didn't get after it. I can't wait to get that working today. So first, take your time and foam roll all those tight, sore muscles to better get into some positions as we're starting off with our band distraction series. The first exercise is our band distraction wall hip opener. What's amazing about this mobility exercise is that the band does all the work. It wraps around the back of your hips and over your knees, pulling and prying those hips open, giving you more range of motion in this much needed tight area. Once one or two minutes have passed, take one leg and place it over the other, which should give you a huge stretch in your piriformis, that glute muscle, followed by turning over and sinking into a deep tactical frog position, furthering opening those hips. Next, I perform a one minute kneeling band distraction stretch per leg, opening up that hip flexor and psoas region. While elevating my leg, it enhances the stretch. Once finished, then I stand up and perform a one minute single arm band distraction stretch per side, which helps open up and clear space within my shoulders to provide greater range of motion and mobility in this area. So once finished our band distraction series, then we're gonna head onto the ground and do our ground-based torso activation exercises, completing eight reps per side. The first exercise is the cat-cow, which releases tension in the upper back and neck area. Next is the plank pike, dynamically stretching the lats and activating the core region. Then we get into our quad nordics. Don't break at the hips. Also make sure to curl your toes into the ground to feel a huge stretch in your feet. Followed by the hip rock series, which targets the groin and hip capsule area, which is also a very super tight area due to all the movements that we do during the week. Then we jump right into our downward dog to cobra, increasing hamstring, shoulder, and low back mobility. Then we will open up that thoracic spine with some side-lying T-spine rotations. Make sure your eyes and head follow the movement of your hand as you open and close the shoulder. And lastly, before we get up and start moving, we finish off with our side plank reachover, dynamically opening up our hip and lat region. All right, you guys know the drill. We're gonna get up onto our feet now. We're gonna go right into our skip series, completing each exercise for 20 yards at length. Our first exercise is our forward skip, forward arm circles, which focuses on opening up that chest and shoulder region. Coming back with our backward skip, emphasizing glute activation with each and every step. This was a quick skip series today. So we're gonna go straight into our leg swing series, side to side in forward swings to help increase both hip and hamstring mobility. Then we jump back to the ground to finish our ground mobility activation exercises, performing eight reps per movement. The first exercise is three glute pumps to prone scorpion, which activates the glute and stretches that low back area. Once finished, flip onto your back and perform the iron cross, which opens up the hamstrings in low back as well. Then kick back into your roll back and reach, making sure to alternate sides and reach for your toes. Then we will posture ourselves into our straight leg kicks, focusing on lengthening out those hamstrings, followed by scissor kicks, which target the groin and adductor muscles. Then we will do our fire hydrant leg lift, which targets and activates our glute muscles, followed by forward and backwards hip circles, making sure to not swivel or twist your hips. And lastly, we're gonna be finishing off with our groiners to really open up our hip flexors. So now that we're all activated, primed, and ready to go, we're gonna go into our biomechanics form and technique. We're going into our sprint mechanic series. Now you guys are getting so much better at this week in and week out, but really focus on the details today. But we're also gonna be adding in our acceleration runs on the way back. So we're gonna be going 20 yards one way with a nice 20 yard, 60 to 70% burst on the way back. Rest for about 30 seconds and then get into the next drill. The first drill, 
works on solidifying and mastering the basic fundamentals to sprinting, which is our A walks. Make sure to roll up onto the toes with each and every step while staying long and tall, emphasizing big knee and shoulder action. Next, we're going to do our A skip, working on big arms driving from the shoulder, developing rhythm and timing with each foot strike. Followed by our A doubles, again, looking for rhythm, timing and coordination, but most of all, the ability to maintain correct posture and mechanics throughout the duration of the drill. Then we're gonna be working on our alternating triple skips, or also known as the high switch, one, two, three. Working on body control and proper posture while making sure to keep that thigh perpendicular to the hip with each and every switch. Then we're gonna be doing our backwards run, really focusing on opening up the hip flexors. And lastly, we're gonna be finishing with our scissor bounds, making sure to claw the ground back and down underneath us, pulling ourselves forward dynamically using those hamstrings. So we're all done our sprint mechanic drills. We're gonna head over to the hurdles and we're gonna be doing our hurdle mobility series, followed by my favorite, our plyometric jumps. And some really cool jumps that you guys are gonna get after today. The first drill is our hurdle walkover, making sure to keep an upright posture without breaking at the hips or rounding the back and coordinating the arms to flow naturally with each and every step over the hurdle. Next is our backwards alternating hurdle walkover, which not only increases mobility, but also develops amazing balance in the awareness abilities to know where you are in space, which is amazing for overall athletic development. Next is a new exercise, and it's called the hurdle crawl through. While keeping your hands touching the hurdles the whole time, slowly lift your leg up and over the hurdle all while keeping them inside the hurdle and close to your body. This is extremely difficult. It takes a lot of body control and mobility in your hips and is why it needs your undivided attention and focus as you move through the hurdles. Make sure to stay as upright as possible throughout the entire drill. The last drill is our alternating triple hurdle step over. You will notice each and every week when performing this drill, you will slowly start to develop greater rhythm and timing with each skip over the hurdle, along with great control and fluidity due in large part to the enhanced mobility in your hips. After the hurdle mobility exercises are complete, we jump right into our plyometric series, performing two sets of five reps for each exercise. Starting off with our stick jumps, place your hands on your hips. The reason for the hands being on the hips forces us to get triple extension and drive through our hips. Make sure to land with your hips higher than your butt. Also emphasize a soft landing to absorb force. Next, we use our arms, which should allow us to get more height with each and every jump. But at the same time, focus on maintaining that control and driving through your toes and getting as long as possible with each and every jump over the hurdle. So I wanna challenge you guys this week with another variation, but it's a lot tougher because it involves a single leg landing. This involves a tremendous amount of body control and stabilization, while also having the abilities to absorb a high amount of force through one leg. So you need to make sure you guys are strong enough and prepared and can land in a solid position before attempting. So lastly, we're gonna be doing a continuous plyometric jump. Think about having quick ground contact with every single jump. Pretend that the ground is hot lava. Make sure to stay in control because we're gonna develop some elite level explosiveness along with rhythm and timing with each and every jump. All right guys, the warm up's done, the fun and games begin. We're about to jump right back on the turf and do our brand new sprinter med ball complex. You guys are gonna absolutely hate me when you guys are doing it, but just in a few short weeks, you guys are gonna reap the benefits, reap the rewards while you're blazing by the competition. Let's get after it. So our med ball sprinter series, I want you to perform a lower body exercise traveling 20 yards both ways down the turf. And upon returning, I want you to go straight into a push up variation for five reps per side, completing two sets of each exercise total. Our first exercise is our low walking side lunges, 
while keeping the med ball out in front of the body. The emphasis in this drill is to stay low and not pop up. Also, with every step, bring your feet together and think about squeezing your inner thighs to emphasize groin activation while also with each step pushing off the outside leg. This is an amazing drill to develop strong, powerful hips while holding the ball out in front develops stronger shoulders. Then we go right into our rolling med ball push-ups, developing shoulder stabilization and core strength with each and every rep. Make sure to not swivel or sway the hips side to side while keeping in control of the movement the entire time. The second and final part of this series is the hamstring lunge walks. Notice how low we stay, but also how we lead with our heel, toe up, with each and every step. As we roll into each lunge, which focuses on hamstring activation, because you need to pull yourself forward. It is also important that you don't take big steps while maintaining correct posture, not rounding your back, and keeping the ball out in front of you the entire time. Same thing goes with the walk backwards. Focus on pulling yourself backwards with each and every step by rolling through the feet and staying in a low position as this will focus on more quad emphasis. Finishing off with our med ball alternating plyometric push-ups. This is a very challenging exercise due to the fact that you need to take your hand off the ball to make the switch, which causes you to develop greater control and stabilization with each and every push-up. All right, Pep Nation, once finished our med ball sprinter series, we're gonna go into our main workout of the day which is our kettlebell sprinter farmer's carries. Now this is an amazing series because it works on our balance and that trunk control and really utilizing that ability to stay in that upright posture. And I really like it because it works on that balance and stabilization all while our entire body is really fighting that kettlebell. So you're gonna get a lot of work out of this. These are all important elements to sprinting, which is why we wanna focus on it for today's main workout. The first exercise is a single arm sprinter walk. Focus on walking in a straight line while holding the kettlebell on one side of your body for 20 yards. As you drive your knee up, hold that position for one second or until you become stabilized. The offset carry on the one side of the body forces your opposite side oblique to stabilize your trunk and hips so you don't collapse over, developing stronger core and greater posture. Make sure to do both sides. Next, we add in our overhead carry, which now works on both core and shoulder stabilization. The goal here is to keep an upright posture while maintaining a strong, rigid core, working on those deep transverse abdominals for greater balance, which will enhance your sprinting abilities for all athletes. Lastly, we add in our heavy double farmer's carries, which literally targets the entire body with each and every step you would need to stay focused and in control by staying locked and loaded in that core while keeping your shoulders packed in a tight, firm grip on the bell. You wanna complete two to three rounds of this kettlebell series. So once finished the kettlebell series, we got two exercises left and they work on the core, which you helps brace and stabilize the same way you would in sports. So let's get after it. The first core exercise is our split squat Paloff Press. This is an amazing anti-rotation exercise that works on those side obliques and hip control. Make sure to keep great upright posture and don't let the band pull you in or cause you to become off balance and unstable. You control the movement, don't let the movement control you. And lastly is our GHD band side plank iso hold perturbations. This is a tremendously difficult exercise because it works that deep core and side oblique. You have to set up in the GHD and have your partner pull the band up towards you. Once you hold onto the band and keep that out in front of you, your partner will now hit the band, causing waves of forces to go throughout your core, which you have to stabilize and brace those forces. This is an amazing exercise because you really get the understanding of how to brace and load and be able to absorb just as you would in sports. 
All right, Pep Nation, now that's the end of the workout. I know it was a long workout today. I'm winded, I'm tired, but we really got to get after it with our form, our biomechanics. We got to take a step back and focus in on the details and get a lot of great um, stability, stabilization, balance, and a lot of core and trunk working today. And then that's what it's all about when we're working on D-Load Week. So I can't wait to get after it and get those gains next week. Let's go! So if you thought that video was hot fire and want to get a better understanding of the methodology and philosophy and get a comprehensive breakdown of each and every exercise, check out my sports performance training program, volume one and volume two, and our speed and agility accelerator in the links below. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to take your game to the next level. I'll see you guys soon.